And go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Attention and prayer. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Surely we are being turned to thee, O Allah, striving to be upright to him who has originated the heavens and the earth, and we are not of the polytheists. Surely our prayer, our sacrifice, our life, and our death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has he, and of this we are commanded, and we are of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king. There is no God but thee. Thou art our Lord, and we are thine servant. We have been greatly unjust to ourselves and we confess of our faults. So grant us protection against all of our faults for none grants protection against faults but thee and guide us unto the best of morals for none guides unto the best of morals but thee and turn away from us the evil and the indecent morals for none can turn away the evil and the indecent morals but thee. O Allah, make Muhammad successful and make the true followers of Muhammad successful as thou did make Abraham and the true followers of Abraham successful. Surely thou art praised and magnified. And O Allah, bless Muhammad and bless the true followers of Muhammad, as thou did bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham. Surely thou art praised and magnified. Amin. Amin. Uh, Thank you so much, Brother Demetrius. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that Allah intervened in our affairs in a divine person of Master Fard Muhammad. I further bear witness that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is his risen and exalted Christ and the eternal leader of the nation of Islam. And I bear witness that the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan is the Jesus in our midst today and the national representative to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'd like to greet us all in the greeting words of peace and paradise, we say in the Arabic language, which simply means peace be unto you. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum salam. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to your Tuesday edition of the Master Call. We have a beautiful day set out for us or a night set out for us. Um, we have our beautiful brother Arvins on today. We haven't had a guest for the Master Call since June, June of last year. We had the year anniversary and we had a whole bunch of guests back to back to back to back to back to back. And we were tired. And we said, you know, we got to come out of this funk. We got to come out. We got to we got to bring on Brother Arvis to lift our spirits. So um, we're going to have Q&A. You are able to put your questions in the chat. Um, this is not going to be like a regular master call where you put master in the chat and come off to be able to um, come off mute to be able to uh, speak. You're just going to put your question in the chat and you can either send it directly to one of the hosts or you can put it in the chat where you want to see. It's really up to you. And we will go back and forth between questions that we have um, uh, already and then questions from the group. Um, at this moment, we will go ahead into introducing our brother Arvins. Brother Arvins is a student of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under the example of the Honorable under the example of the Honorable Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan. He is a member of the World E Team. He manages a small zoo at Muhammad University of Islam in Chicago and has love for life and his people. He is not a silent witness and has willing and has willing answered the master call. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Today he will share with us his experience with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and his unique relationship with the wheels, the baby planes. Brother Arvins, assalamu alaikum. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you have anything that you would like to say to start us off. Yes, ma'am. I would like to give everyone the greetings of Assalamu alaikum. And thank, you so all well, like thank you all for blessing me to be a part of this show. And I pray to Allah that I can inspire everyone that's watching. Yes, sir. Pray to Allah. So we're going to go straight into a video that our um, brother Daryl, if you don't know him, you probably do. He's D-Row on the internet. Um, he is a videographer. Everybody in should know Daryl. <laughs> um, he made a video after the minister, July 4th, uh, 2020, in his um, Criterion address, mm -hmm. he introduced us to the wheels. And he said that we would see them um, after 
he finished closing down the garden. And we certainly did. So he put a compilation together of as many things that he could find of people witnessing these baby planes. So we are gonna go ahead and play that video and shout out to Brother Daryl for putting this together for us. Brother Demetrius, do you mind starting the video over so they can see the first words? That's why I asked them to show you the wheels. Yes, sir. Because I've also asked Allah to send them yes, sir. over here. Yes, sir. Just to confirm what I've said today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That the man that I'm representing to you, those two men, yes. they are the masters of the wheels. Yes, sir. Doesn't even look like a plane, does it? I don't know what the f this is, but whatever it is, it's not a plane and it's just moving fast. I'm telling you, those aren't planes. <laughs> When I close down in the garden, yes, sir. Yes, sir. the God will do some work. Yes, sir. Not no lantern, bro. <laughs> that defies logic. It's like a damn UFO. <laughs> why is it, why is it supposed to, where's it going? I know I'm 
not tripping. Outside my window. Una especie de objetos voladores no identificados, llámense ovnis, cambiando de colores. Son cinco. Yeah. ¿Qué pasa ahí? Yo sé. No, un dron, no. Eh, no, no, tú le des. ¿Estás viendo? Acaba el mundo ahí, ¿viste? Tiene un luzinho piscando. Praise be to Allah. I pray that got everybody amped up for the class that we have approaching us. So we will immediately go into the first question. And again, you can put your questions in the chat as well if you would like to submit them to the host or you can put them in the chat for everyone to see. Really don't make a difference as long as we get the question. So the first question is, do you think there is any significance behind most believers seeing the shadowy figure of the angels and you actually seeing their face in the vision you had in 2001. I mean, whoever they allow to see their faces or not, that's up to them. Some people can handle it. Some people may not be able to handle it at that moment. And them arriving to you like that in a vision or how did they allow you to see them is mostly based on the spiritual connection like and there's a reason why i mean most of the visions like that happen to people late at night when it's quiet and real late and it's not mostly anything going on because there's less distractions coming at you than in the daytime there's a lot of noise you got a lot on your mind you got to go to work people got to pick up children all that type of stuff so i mean they are they are in control of that 100 is what i found out just over the years of dealing with being blessed to be able to communicate with them and see them a lot they're in control of who sees them how they see them when they see them if you can take pictures or videos or anything like that even if you can remember what you've seen they're in control of that as well because i've had so many other different experiences that i don't remember but then later on someone ask a question or I hear the minister say something and it just pops up in my head. Oh yeah, I remember when, you know, this happened. So they, they are in control of that. Very good. Praise me to a lot. For those who don't know, I say very good. I did everything. Okay. So just bear with. <laughs> okay. Uh, Brother Demetrius, would you like to go into the question that Brother Darren placed in the chat? He placed it in the chat for everybody to see. Um, I think so. No, he didn't actually. No, sorry. All right. I'll read it. Uh, he asked, this is Brother Darren X out of Chicago. He says, you have been near to the minister and he has shared things with you that can strengthen the believers now and in his absence. Is there anything that comes to mind that you believe is relevant in this hour to share with the community? 
everything that he says is irrelevant. <laughs> but um, lately, the minister did say a few weeks ago, he did tell us how much longer this pandemic would be around. He said, we have three to four more years left. And then he said, after that, we have three years of hardship. So unless a lot of changes all of that, he's the warner. So, I mean, just think about in the year 2020, when the pandemic first came, the world shut down, you can't go to the store, people had to stay in the house. If you had extra food and water and stuff like that, you may have been okay, but if not, you may have suffered some. So I think it would be wise for all of us to go out and shop as much as we can right now before this war gets too bad and they shut things down and something else, a new variant comes out. There's no telling what's going to happen now. And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said the worst is yet to come. I thought the worst was in 2020. <laughs> but if it's yet to come, like I'm not looking forward to it. And we have everything that we need to survive whatever is coming. So as long as we do what we're supposed to do, we'll be fine. Praise be to a lot. And really to think about it, because you're saying, you know, the minister said three to four years of the pestilence and then another three years of hardship. Hearing it be like, ah, but then in the reality of it all, what was seven years ago? Like 2013, 14-ish? Right. That went by in the blink of an eye. Exactly. So as long as we endure we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Praise be to a lot. Uh, Sister Jadea did just put in the chat, at what mo at what point did he say the three to four years? She kind of trying to calculate. <laughs> when, was it oh, like blame. two years ago he said it? When did he, no, he said this close to the end of last year. Yes, sir. So, you know, we have three to four more years left, including this year. So, including this year, three more years left. Cause this is one year 2022 three more years left will be four you know so then after that three years of hardship <laughs> yes sir. but it's like it's, it's not even just like you said you hear it and it's like oh man you want this thing to be over but this is the closing down of a world and the people who have treated a lot of people like what the worst ever like you can't continue to go against the lord of the worlds and his will and remain here you can't so everything that's against Allah's will in his mind and what he wants to be done, it has to cease to exist at some point. And we have everything in the light given teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So to allow us to see so many years into the future, we have no reason not to pass the test. That's right. Very good. Um, the next question is, it's not from, it's actually from myself, just for anybody who is not necessarily clear on what the wheels are, the baby plane, the mother wheel, all of that stuff. Even though we just watched the video, some of you people may have came in late. Can you explain in your fine words, <laughs> can you explain what the mother wheel is, what the baby planes are? So the baby planes are what people call UFOs. These are small ships. With the enemy lies and stays aliens but the most honorable elijah muhammad said that they are people human beings like me and you who were taught by the lord of the worlds to pilot these planes and these baby planes what people call ufos were made by the lord of the worlds as a part of the judgment phase and shutting down of satan and satan's world the most honorable elijah muhammad said that each one of these 1500 baby planes carry three bombs on it and each bomb has the ability to drill down into the ground one mile deep and it explodes and brings up a mountain one mile high and everything within the 50 mile radius of the detonation of that bomb is destroyed. So in the most honorable Elijah Muhammad also said that when each baby plane unloads all three bombs, he said that they can go back and refuel and unload the bombs several times before the enemy gets to fire just one shot. That's how fast that they can go. So just imagine there's, you can't even shoot at something that fast, you'll never hit it. And if they can go back and forth to reload and unload, I mean, how can you fight something like that? <laughs> and what's called the mother plane is the biggest of those. All of the rest of them are small, but the biggest one is a half mile by a half mile size wide and also half mile by half mile size tall. So just imagine something that big being in the sky 
and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that this big mother wheel is able to make a high pitched sound that when it makes that high pitched sound, it crumbles buildings. Now buildings, most buildings are made of steel, brick, glass, and all of that. Most of these materials are stronger than the bones of a human body. So if it'll crumble buildings, imagine what it's gonna do to your body. So, but only those who strive to live the way God say to live will be saved. And everyone else, unfortunately, I mean, just look at the world we live in. You have homosexuality, you have uh, the overuse of sex, you have all of this madness on television, they're attacking righteous people, attacking the man of God. I mean, you have human trafficking, all sorts of things, wars. I mean, it's too much killing going on. It's just madness all over the planet. And it has to cease to exist at some point. So those baby planes and the biggest one is just one phase of the shutting down of Satan and Satan's world that God has done to use. Yes, sir. Ooh, I didn't even know about the, uh, the high pitch sound like that. Um, our next question will come from brother Jeremy. Or me? Yes, ma'am. Aslam alaikum, family. So this question came from the chat. Uh, Brother Manny X said, have you ever seen the mothership? If so, can you describe it? I believe I have. <laughs> Mother Tynetta talked about this big, huge, uh, circular-shaped cloud that's been seen around the planet many times, and many people have taken videos and pictures of it. And she talked about when you see this big, uh, circular-shaped cloud sitting in the sky with a light inside of it coming from the cloud, she said, that's the mother wheel. I've actually seen that appear over the farm last summer. It was last summer. And it wasn't there before. And then a few hours later, I go outside and walk around and I notice it sitting off to the side of the farm across from the minister's house. And I said to myself, I'm going to take a video of it. I took a video of it and showed the minister. So I, I think I've seen it once. I think I've seen it once. Uh, there's actually a, a lecture and I'm going to strive to find it before we um, close out so I can give it to everyone in the chat. There is a lecture where the minister showed a picture of what you're talking about. And I think it was seen in like China. It was seen somewhere um, like overseas. And he said, that's the mother wheel. Uh, so I'm gonna strive to find it because it's exactly what you said. It's a cloud and it um, has the light and everything. Yeah. And then brother Demetrius. And this is coming from our audience questions that we got. The next one, will you ever release some of the footage the angels provided you with? And have you ever thought about writing a book about your close, about your close relationship with them? So two part question. That's a good question. <laughs> At some point I plan to release the footage. I want to ask the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan of um, the best way to do that because some of the, a lot of the footage that I have is from his security cameras at his home. And so, you know, I can't just throw that out there. He has to, <laughs> but uh, some of the footage I caught with my phone, some of the footage I caught with my camcorder, at some point, the footage is gonna have to be released at some point, because especially when he leaves in his absence, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that when I'm gone, you will know that a man of God was in your midst. And those of us who bear witness to that, when he's gone, we'll have to bear witness and show people, tell people all the things he's done among our presence and showing the, uh, the baby playing video footage that we have, we can show that. And some of that footage, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is in that footage watching what we're looking at. You know, and as far as the book is concerned, I have started writing notes on writing a book. A lot of people have been telling me for about two or three years, you need to write a book, like a lot of different people. So I said to myself, that sounds like a law is telling me to write a book because the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that when you hear something repeatedly from many different people and it's the same thing, he said, usually that's a law talking to you. It's an instruction of some point. So I, I plan to write a book and inshallah, I plan to just give it away to everybody. 
I don't care about selling and making money off of it. I just want to spread the truth because it's something that's given to us that's going to help a lot of people and bear witness to Allah in his message. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. Um, I have a question. It is from the Swan Song. Um, and immediately I'm singing that Swan Song. Uh, <laughs> Brother Righteous Child posted. <laughs> but it's from the Swan Song. Um, the minister was singing the, the Going Up Yonder song. And he said, it was a part in there where I think it was around the part where he said, I'm giving you the tool of measurement to measure yourself. And then he said, because we're going up yonder. And my husband was like, did he just say where we are? Mm. <laughs> I said, hmm. And then so I continued to play the video. He said, you can't go where I'm going, but there's a place for you or there's a place being prepared for you. Something along those lines. Can you, if you have any insight on that, can you please share? Uh, in the life giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, I remember reading about how during those last phases of the destruction of Satan's world, the believers that would be saved after the angels that would be placed on each corner, directing people where to go, and you will be asked first, who are you with? If you don't answer correctly, then they know that you are not a real believer <laughs> and a real follower of the Jesus in our midst. And if you answer correctly, they're going to know you're telling the truth. So they're going to be directing those who have been striving to live the way Allah ordered us to live to a safe place. Wherever it is, I don't know. But the scriptures talk about uh, there will be those on a far off shore watching the destruction, watching the burning of Satan and Satan's world. Now, where that far off shore is, I don't know. But we will be saved. Wherever Allah takes us, we will be saved. Praise be to Allah. That is very, that's good to hear. <laughs> that's really, yeah. really, really encouraging. I remember Brother Mustafa saying in a meeting, he was, um, you know, because we talk about the destruction and all the things. And I think he could feel everyone's vibe in the room, kind of like, mm -hmm. ah. and then he said, as a believer, you should be resolved that you are going to make it through the dark hour. Right. And that everybody's spirit got lifted up after that. Cause it's like, yeah, cause what we've been doing this for 90 plus years for, if I don't believe I'm gonna make it through, I gotta have my mind set on the hereafter. So praise be to a lot. Uh, brother Demetrius or brother Jeremy to go into the next question. Um, the next one, oops, what happened to my list? There we go. Um, the next question, what is the difference between seeing baby planes in visions or dreamlike states versus seeing them in person while fully conscious? Are they different? Are there different levels of experiences? Yes, they are different levels of experiences. Um, when you have visions and, you, and they're not directly in front of you in the sky or have they present themselves to you in person, when you have visions, it's them sending you something, a message. They're able to do that. They're powerful. They're able to do that. But when you see them in person, there's a different experience. It's like it's a higher state of consciousness that you're placed in to even see them and to deal with that. It's so shocking. Most people can't deal with it. But when they show themselves to you, however they show themselves to you, they know the level that you're on that you can handle that's the level that they show themselves to you on. And it's a different experience. It's like stage one, the visions, stage two in person, stage three, maybe what they've done to me and <laughs> do the physical moving of the body and they can do whatever they want. And you have to learn to speak to them, think on them constantly and ask them, what is it that they're trying to get you to understand? What is it they're trying to get you to see? They'll let you know. They'll let you know. Yes, sir. Um, do we want to go to Brother Jim? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So I have a question in the chat from Sister um, Naja. She says, has the minister taught you on why the baby planes come to you at times before they go to him? He didn't 
say it outright, but it's other little small things he said that I had to pick up on later. He told me many times how special I am to him, how special I am to Allah and those on the wheels. That's like <laughs> a lot for me. So I'm listening to it. I have to accept it and just strive to live in that moment and just try to be a, a good vessel to receive whatever it is they're trying to get me to tell the minister, whatever that is. He, he, didn't, he, he tells me a lot off and on. It's like, and I have to do my job and put it all together and think on it and figure out what exactly he's trying to get me to do. Because Allah speaks through his messenger. You know, he doesn't speak either words. So when he says something and we hear it, if we try to obey it, we'll receive a greater benefit. So he has, but he hasn't like outright said why. He said other little things that I had to look into. So. Yes, sir. Um, question. This is my question. <laughs> um, can you explain for the people who they are? Like when you say they can make themselves um, known, they, they, they can you explain who the they are? Yes, ma'am. The they are the pilots on what people call UFOs. We call them baby planes. They, the human beings pilot these ships. These ships, they don't pilot themselves. I don't know if they may have the technology to do that. I'm pretty sure they do. They ain't even know how to make drones and stuff like that. But these have people on them, they're pilots. They, I'm talking about those individuals. They're gods, Allah made them. They don't even know how to think other than perfect submission to the Lord of the worlds. That's what the type of people they, that's what I'm speaking of, them. They are the ones you see when you see videos of what we just watched at the beginning of this program, those people on it. Now, others that don't understand it, they're freaked out. You can hear their reactions. Some of it is kind of funny, but I've reacted like that before and I see them all the time. It's like, you can't be totally prepared all the time. There's nothing that they can't do. Some of the stuff still blows me away. So they, those people who pilot those wheels, that's what I'm talking about when I say they. Good, good teaching, brother. Yes, sir. The next question, this is from uh, our audience again beforehand. Pardon me, there we go. Is it wise to call on the baby planes with prayer in the name of Allah? and hopes of communication, guiding, guidance, and witness bearing? Or does, or does doing this put us in danger of idol worship or praying to something other than Allah? It's wise to do anything in Allah's name, first of all, especially when you're trying to do the right thing, you're looking for guidance. It's not idol worship because you're not praying to them. They're not the Lord of the worlds. You pray to the Lord of the worlds, but you're not praying to them. Now, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, when we pray, say it in his name. And honorable, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said to the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan, he said, when you mention my name, Allah will give you what you're asking for. So when I ask the angels on the wheels to come, I always do it in the name of Allah who came to us in the person of Master Father Muhammad. And I also say in the name of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I also say in the name of the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. And then I ask them, please show yourselves to be allowed me to see you. You know, sometimes it's right away. Sometimes it's an hour or two later, but it usually works. If it doesn't work right away, if you don't see them, just keep practicing it. Just keep practicing it because you opening up that line of communication between yourself and those who operate those ships. And there's a certain mindset you have to be in. You can't ask them and try to talk to them and doubt overpowers your mind. You're short-circuiting your own power if you have doubt in your mind, more doubt than belief. So as we're taught, practice makes perfect. The more you practice that, the more easier it will become. Brother Jeremy? Yes, ma'am. So another question in the chat from Brother Garen. He says, how does your relationship with the wheels and the pilots um, angels, scientists, vind uh, vindictive, the reality of God being a man and not a spook. Vindicate. You mean, vindic you mean vindicate? vindicate. <laughs> My apologies. 
hey, we all still learning out here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so these are human beings. In the scripture, it talks about how we're made in the image and the likeness of God. So if God is a spirit and you're not a spirit and they're not spirits, they're human beings, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad say, then if we're made in his image, then he must be a human being as well. You know, so it's like when you see these angels on the wheels, that's physical proof that God is a man. That's physical proof that he's not just some spirit floating around and he's unreal, it's just a thought. That's physical proof that he's real, real life human being with power over everything and everyone. That's physical proof. And it strengthens your belief, it strengthens your faith because studying the life-giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is one thing, but seeing it in person, that's like you're being graduated from belief to knowing. It's the words in the book coming to life. It's the scripture coming to life. So. Praise be to Allah. And I must say, I'm so happy that we are having this conversation about the baby planes, um, these experiences, um, because it is such, even though we heard the minister talk about them, I mean, his his base of him rebuilding the nation is based off of him going to the wheel and um, doing the work that he needs to do that one more thing, doing that work to be able to see his father again face to face. Um, but it's one thing hearing the minister talk about it. It's another thing hearing us as the body of believers talking about it. So it doesn't make it such a taboo conversation. It's like, no, this is the reality of what's happening. So we should be able to freely talk about it the way the minister freely says, when I went up on the wheel and he's not trying to convince nobody about it, he just talks about it. So I really enjoyed that we're having this conversation and inshallah, based upon, um, this will be a, a gateway to all the other interviews that we have on the master call to ask them if they had any experiences. It's going to be great to hear a Brother Nori experience, a Dr. Wesley experience, a Minister Ava experience, so we could get more comfortable with this conversation. So um, the next question is from Sister Greta. She asked, where is it? Would, um, would our brothers and sisters on the wheel communicate through numbers or on the baby planes communicate through numbers? Can they communicate through numbers? Yes, sir. Yes, they can communicate whichever way they choose. They, they don't have any restrictions. So, I mean, we have restrictions because we have been destroyed as a people and we're trying to get back to what Mother Tarnetta said, we lost our power during that time. We're trying to get back to where we were before and even greater. So the angels on the wheels, they don't have restrictions. They are gods, you know? They, they don't have anything that they can't do unless Allah says don't do it. There's nowhere in the universe that they can't go to. There's nowhere on the planet they can't go to. They can communicate with whoever they want to communicate with. And I bear witness to that. They come to the farm a lot. And I have to tell the minister. It's like, that's the relationship they built with me. I didn't, this is something that was placed on me. I didn't ask for it. <laughs> you know, so all of us, when Allah is doing something with us, we have to accept it because we can handle it. He gives us things that we can handle. Praise be to Allah. I'm enjoying this thoroughly. Y'all let us know in the chat if y'all are enjoying these answers that y'all are getting from our brother, our Vince. Um, we have a question from our sister Zodi. She asked, when the angels are reaching out to you, do you ever hear a ringing in the ears accompanied by any bodily sensations? If so, what would you suggest someone do when they experience those things? I have received both of those <laughs> plenty of times, rain in the ear and bodily sensations. What I've learned to do over the years is to just listen to that. You have to be calm. You can't panic. Do your best not to panic. Be calm and try to be still and quiet and listen. And whatever feeling that you get, strive hard to follow that feeling. What I've gotten many times at the farms, I would hear ringing in one of my ears, and then I know by this point, okay, something's getting ready to happen. So I stop and be still 
And then I get a feeling and say, look up to the right. I look up to the right and then the light comes on and they start flying and shooting around. That happens a lot. <laughs> so, I mean, they could communicate to you however they please. They're, they're on that high scientific level. There's nothing that they can't do. I would suggest just be calm, be cool. If you want to say a prayer, you can say a prayer during that moment because your mind and your spirit has to be completely open to receive them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother Jeremy. Yes, ma'am. So we have another question in the chat. Um, this is from um, Sister Naja. Um, she says, are all the pilots brothers? Do you know why or why not? They're brothers in a sense of just like we call each other brothers and sisters. I mean, they're striving to obey Allah. They obey Allah. That's all they do. And all of us together, we're striving to do the same thing. We're family, you know? And I don't know if all of them are blood brothers. I don't know. But I do know that they are brothers together in obedience to Allah. I do know that. Some of them may be blood brothers. Who knows? I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> I think what she was trying to ask was, are there any women on the big oh, place? Or are I they think that's what she was asking too. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't doubt it. I don't know. It's, I mean, it's not a thing that's impossible <laughs> because the women that are up there are in obedience to Allah as well. That's the, that's the only thing that they know is perfect obedience to Allah. Makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. Um, I do have a question. It is not from. It's this from me. Okay, so, <laughs> this question is referred to when you um, you just said I didn't um, like you didn't bestow this blessing upon yourself. So then it made me think: Did you have experiences as a child with? Um, with the wheel, the baby planes, um, having experiences um, with our brothers on the wheel that came up maybe later on and you were like, hmm, that, this seems kind of deja vu-ish or familiar. It doesn't seem like a far-fetched feeling. It feels like I felt this before. Is there anything that you could share with us that happened maybe younger that while this was, wasn't asked to be bestowed upon you, it's not far-fetched. You've kind of been experiencing this all your life. <laughs> Possibly. The only thing that I can recall when I was five years old and I seen the actual ship in broad daylight follow the car that we were in for 15 minutes, that's the number one thing that I can recall when I was a child. I'm pretty sure other things have happened and I can't remember for some reason, but I started following and studying the life giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad when I was in sixth grade. So very early for me, and studying it, I joined it when I was 19, fresh out of high school, and I was ready. I already knew what I wanted to do, and it wasn't until after I joined the nation that I started to see them all the time, and it's like, they were like, okay, now you're ready, and so it's like they're taking you up to the next multiple levels, however far you allow them to take it. Man. All right, next question from the audience. This is random. Uh, after you are visited by the wheels, have you noticed any changes in the way your mind or emotions function? Yes, I noticed that in that moment while I'm watching them, I'm more calm, I'm more on a higher level of thinking. Um, my, my whole body is relaxed for some reason. It's, I don't think it's something that I'm doing. I think it's something that they do to me when they come. It's like when the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was told before they took him to the wheel, they told him to relax. And then they sent the beam of light to draw him up into the wheel. And then they took him to the mother wheel. So they have the ability to calm you down. You know, um, that's what I feel. I feel very calm. My thinking is clearer. Um, it's just, there's like a transformation that happens when I see them, because it's like when you immerse yourself deep in what's happening with them and what they're trying to do with you, you receive more out of it. You know, it's almost like in Ramadan, you're on a higher level of thinking, you know, you're eating one meal a day and you're reading the Quran every single day. So it's, it's less 
distractions and madness going in your mind. So when you see the angels on the wheels, just focus on them and think, talk to them through your mind. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrell kind of told me, you don't have to speak to them with your words. He said, they listen to your thinking. That's how you talk to them. And that's how I talk to you back. So yes, it's everything. Your thinking is higher. Your body is calm. And it's like, you, you feel a heightened sense of awareness. It's like you feel more spiritually heightened by them. Beautiful, beautiful, brother. Um, next question from the chat uh, from Brother Javon. He says, how did you get on the E-team and what has been a highlight experience for you as a member of the E-team? Wow. <laughs> so I was recruited <laughs> to the E-team. Uh, one of the minister's daughters, she was the one who started that process. And she talked to members of the E-team. She talked to her father. And one day the minister sent one of his grandsons out of the house and asked me to write my full name on the sheet of paper to give to him. I'm nervous. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> so I write my name on the sheet of paper, give it to his grandson. He takes it in the house. And then uh, the, I guess the minister sent some of the brothers on the E-team to start the process with me. And I started the process. and. Everything worked out by Allah's grace. And now I've been a member of the E-Team for, ooh, since 2004. What's that? 10, 16, 18 years. Praise 18 be to Allah. 18 years. Praise be to Allah. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. Um, the next question is, um, I know a lot of us have had dreams or such where the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad is present, where Master Farah Muhammad is present, or maybe the minister is present. And it's a dream that's like, that didn't feel dreamish. Um, so are we able, is it coincidence that they come up like, you know, when we're dreaming, we're just usually, cause we're thinking about somebody that day or something like that. So the question is, can we summons the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Master Farah Muhammad and the minister in our dream, or if we see them, it's because they want us to see them. I believe you can summon them because mm -hmm. if most honorable Elijah Muhammad and honorable minister Louis Farrakhan allows us to write him letters, <laughs> if you can write a letter, then I'm pretty sure you can summon him as well. Now, whenever they decide to show themselves to you in a vision, they're in charge of that. We just have to make sure we do our best to be that open vessel. Because I mean, a closed mouth can't get fed. So I mean, I heard the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan explain why he pray like this with our hands open. He said, imagine if someone wants to give you a gift, you want to hold your hands out to receive the gift. But if you say, if you do this, you're telling the person who's trying to give you the gift that you don't want it. <laughs> so I mean, you have to be an open vessel. You have to receive it and strive to remain open. And the best way to do that is, is stay studious. The life giving teaches of the most honorable life, Muhammad, keeps us open. It keeps that connection between us and the Supreme Being. And that's the way that you can stay guided the right way. All oh, praise is due to Allah. Um, we got another question from the chat from our brother Montrell. Could you share the story of the vision you had about the minister's departure? Oh, yes. <laughs> so the vision started out like this. And I actually explained this whole entire thing to the minister in his living room. And he told me it wasn't a dream. So then that's when I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> so I thought it was a dream at first until the minister told me it wasn't. So this is the way it started out. I'm outside with the rest of the FOI from Maz Mariam. I don't know where we are. We're securing the area of this big mansion in the middle of nowhere, right? We know the minister is coming to meet with someone inside of the mansion. We don't know who he's meeting with, right? So we're standing outside, and all of a sudden, this is broad day, all broad day like. All of a sudden, three baby planes come flying over our head like this constantly. So we outside, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, look, look, Allah Akbar. And then they land right in front of us. They didn't touch the grass, but they were hovering maybe like two feet off of the grass perfectly spaced out, one between another, three of them. It was like 
black matte gray type of color uh, metal material. Spears, they're like an oval shape. So they land in front of us. The front of each one lets out into stairs that touch the grass. One tall black man got out of each one. They were like tall, like six, six, something like that. They were like really tall. They were slim, they were muscular. They had on these one piece flight suits with a short Nehru collar. They had some different type of markings and lines on their uniform that I'd never seen before. Their uniform was made out of some material that I'd never seen before. The color was like a, um, a dark gray color. And all of them had short haircuts, like they had ball fade, ball fade haircuts with sharp linings. Their skin was really soft. They gave all of us the greetings, cheek to cheek, shook our hands and said, Asalaamu As Alaikum. And I felt their skin on my skin. It was so soft, I never felt human skin like that. And their hands were really, really soft. I never felt skin on nobody's hands like that. They didn't have any blemishes in any of their skin, nowhere. Their skin was perfect. Their teeth were perfect and perfectly white. Their eyes were perfectly white. Their skin was perfect. They were all slim, they were muscular. And the way they came, they had authority. Like somebody sent them and we seen it. So we all froze <laughs> and there was one in charge. He only talked to me for some reason, I don't know why. He asked me, he said, where's the minister? And I'm shocked. I don't know what to do, what to say. I couldn't even speak. I was so shocked. I just pointed to the house because the minister was in the house at that point, meeting with whoever he was meeting with. So I pointed to the house and the brother looked at the house. He looked at me and then him and the two other angels, they walked to the house and stood in front of the stairs and waited for the minister to come out. So we're just looking at all of this, like what's going on? It looked like they're coming to take him, but we don't know what's gonna happen yet. So the minister gets done with his meeting. He comes out the front door of the house. He starts walking down the stairs. The one in charge steps in front of the minister and he doesn't let the minister get inside of his car. So he, he stood in front of the minister with his hands up like this. And all of them were standing like this, all three of them. He asked the minister, he said, brother minister, are you ready? The minister looked at him. He looked at the other two angels. Then he looked around. He seen the baby planes parked <laughs> in the grass back there. And he looked, he did like this. And he looked down he said, Yes, I'm ready. His spirit was like, I don't want to go, but I have to go. You're taking me now. I can't stay no longer. You're taking me. So the one that was in charge, she grabbed the minister's arm. He went on the left side of the minister, grabbed the back of his arm. One other angel went on the other side, grabbed the minister's arm. The third one stood behind the minister, and all three of them walked the minister into the baby plane of the one that was in charge. And the other two went into their baby plane, and all of them took off like that, and I woke up. So the minister said, yeah, that was, that was, <laughs> <laughs> and the minister said it wasn't a dream. So I'm like, I can't explain how it wasn't a dream, but it didn't feel like a dream. As I was having it, it felt like I was actually there. I actually felt their hands when they shook my hand. I felt their face. You know how you give each other cheek to cheek and say, as alaikum before COVID? I felt their face. It's like, it was so real. It was so real. I didn't know that it wasn't a dream, though, <laughs> until the minister told me. That's insane, brother. I'm glad you shared that one with us. Um, we have another chat uh, question. This is from Sister um, Helen. I, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. She says, what is the difference between the baby planes and the orbs? The orbs appear to be listening or recording devices. Could this have been the way they recorded history in the past? It's possible. It's possible. And I mean, there was a time where I seen a video footage of an army general, army general explaining how he and his man was on a military base and one of those orbs came to the base and landed in the woods. It was a triangular orb. And he said he walked to it he drew a picture of it and I'm like, that's not as big as a baby plane. It was, it was really small, but it was triangular. He said it landed in the woods. It allowed them to actually touch it. He said it was warm to the touch. He said it had three big lights on it and the whole thing was like kind of glowing, like pulsating. And then he said it allowed them to take notes, write down what they were looking at. And the man actually had a uh, audio recorder in his hand. He recorded and explained to him what he was looking at. 
And then he played the footage on the video so that we can hear it. He said after that, the thing took off into the sky and left. So the amount of technology of what Allah, the Lord of the world, is able to do is unlimited. Just think of the type of technology that we have today in the world that we live in. Like things are totally different from the 1800s. There was no social media. There was no computers. There was no uh, smartphones and stuff like that. No tablets or anything like that. So now we have these things now. So many years ago, we didn't have it. Our technology has evolved to where we do have these now. Just think of the amount of things that Allah is able to do over the years. He's not just one dimensional. He's not like he can't only do one thing. He's unlimited. So in 1930, pardon me, 1929, the mother wheel and the baby planes were launched. Since 1929 up until now, 2022, if we believe there are still only 1,500 and there's only one baby plane, there could be more. There could be more than one mother wheel. By now, you know, who knows? I mean, we were only told about the 1,500 baby planes in one mother plane. So it's, we don't, it's so many things that we don't know that we have to dig into within the life-giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. It's so many things. Praise be to Allah. Thank you, thank you. You spoke about something in the question before last that I thank Brother Demetrius for asking because um, I asked you a question before, but I don't think you quite understood where I was trying to, where I was going with it. So I'm asking more a clarifying question. And it's to where you said the minister said that wasn't a dream. So clarifying question, can we dream of, can we dream of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, Master Fraud Muhammad and the minister, or is it when we see them in these unconscious states that we're assured we're having an experience and there's a message in it? That's what I mean, like, can we summon oh, them? Uh, <laughs> yes, you can. You can dream of them. Okay. I don't know if we can purposely do it. Some may able to be able to purposely dream of them. But anything that I've dreamed, it just came out of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, Allah and his messenger, they can send you messages. And it's for you. It's for your growth and development. Just like when you see the angels on the baby planes, it's for your growth and development. And when you study, it's for your growth and development. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure we can. <laughs> yes, I yes, am. To Allah. Um, we have a question from our brother, Marcus. Uh, uh, Pardon me, I just had it. I'm gonna be the one that keeps losing the questions. Y'all can tag that on me, it's okay. All right, he says, Assalamu alaikum. When they appear, <laughs> do you ever hear their voices? I'm curious of that too. Like if you could hear them from a distance or anything like that. I never hear their voices, but when they appear, most of the time what I get is a feeling of their presence before I see them. And that feeling tells me to look in a certain direction and then they show themselves. Sometimes they just pop up and I don't hear, I don't feel anything. <laughs> you know, they just pop up and the whole surprise element is there. Um, a couple of times before in the past, I did hear not a voice from them, but you know how you get a thought in your mind in your own voice, but you know that thought didn't come from yourself? I felt that plenty of times. And I started to listen to that, and the thought tells me to do X, Y, and Z. Most of the times the, talk, the thought tells me, tell the minister, hurry up, we came, you know. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that when they come to the farm very, very often in one night, he said that means that the enemy is planning something. And that's happened a few times. And I said, let me hurry up and tell the minister, you know, because wherever he's getting ready to go, there's probably a death plot waiting on him. And a few times before in the past, the minister has canceled meetings and canceled trips because of that. He said, you know, you've seen the red one, this, you know, he's canceled things and he didn't go nowhere. So whatever message that they're giving him through you, you have to just relay the message. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we have, okay, let me see what I'm going to go next. Um, 
I'm gonna go here because she hasn't asked a question. Um, and sister, bear with me. Hope I'm saying your name right. Um, is it uh, Sakia? Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, but she asked, what is our relationship to the pilots? Do we try to communicate with them to get guidance or receive a message from Allah? You can try to communicate with them. You can. That's not something that you're unable to do. You can do it. And so I've been doing it because the minister told me that I can do it. Had not he told me, I would have never tried. <laughs> So, I mean, we we don't know the power that we have on our own. It's like the life-giving teachers of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad has to guide us. Allah has to guide us. His messenger has to guide us. The honorable minister Louis Farrakhan has to guide us. So, yes, you can communicate with them on your own, but you can't doubt it. You can't doubt it. If you go into it doubting and it's like you're closing the avenue of communication, it's not that they won't come to you at all because they can come to you and make you stop doubting. I've seen that plenty of times. I've seen the angels come and one of the brothers was standing next to me. I said, look, they right there. And he couldn't even believe what he was looking at because at that moment he didn't want to believe. But whatever was going on in his mind, I had to show him a couple of times and then he opened up. So the angels on the wheels, they're able to communicate with anyone and you can definitely communicate with them whenever you please. And I would suggest talking to them as much as you can. <laughs> Talk to Allah as much as you can as well. Yes, sir. Um, our next question, I'm gonna go from the list is, I love this one. Has an angel ever visited you and tried to tell you something, but you can't move or understand what they are saying? Hmm. Lately, I have been able to understand what they've been saying to me. I haven't had a situation where they tried to communicate with me and uh, froze my movements in that moment. I've always been able to move, but Lately, I've been striving to stay still on purpose, to try to be calm and just listen more. Because listening is very key and relaxing is very key. It's very key. You know, you can't be, it's hard to say don't panic <laughs> because most people will. I mean, it's not a normal experience. So try your best not to panic. Practice not panicking. <laughs> you know, over the years, I had to learn that when I see the angels on the wheels, I always get so excited and sometimes I get so excited I can't even talk and I'm trying to tell people, look, I had to learn how to stop doing it. Look at them, be calm, pull your camera out, take pictures, take videos. A lot of times they don't allow me to take pictures and videos, you know, so it's like, but at the same time, they allowed me to document them on my phone and take a record. And I take a record of the location, the day, the time, uh, the velocity, the, the shapes, the colors, the speed, all of that. Like they've brought me up to that level right now. So I'm not the only one they can do this to. They can do this to you as well. Praise be to Allah. I'm not going to lie. My, my mind feels different right now. Just hearing this <laughs> stuff come from you, bro. This is a different level of conversation right now. Um, the next question that we have is from the pre-answers as well. This one says, how close have you been to the wheels? Do you only see them at a distance or have you had close encounters with them? I've had a couple of close encounters, two that I can recall. There could have been more that they won't allow me to recall. <laughs> but when I was five years old, that was the first time seeing the ship in broad daylight come out of the sky. And it was like maybe 20 stories in the air. So it was, that's just a few hundred feet. And then one time at the farm at night, this I'm walking out of the house. I didn't get to make it to the porch. As soon as I opened the door to walk out of the house, there was this red triangle flying very low, maybe like 300 feet over the farm, right over the minister house. The light was, the triangle baby plane was, it was a triangle, it was red. It was glowing red. 
it wasn't pulsating, it was just a bright red light, a bright red triangle. And surrounding the triangle was a brighter red light of some sort that they made. And it was just flying quietly. For some reason, I couldn't speak and I couldn't move. I tried to tell the minister's driver who was standing behind me, look, look, look. And just as they were getting ready to leave, they allowed me to get the words out. And I told him, I said, look, look, look. And he came out and the minister's driver saw this red triangle flying low over the minister's house. Those were the only times that I can recall that I had a close encounter with them. Yes, oh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir we got out. My internet sometimes be choppy, guys. Um, okay. But so we have a, a, another question. I'm going to circle back to um, Sister uh, Naja. She said, "Could you expound on the vision slash experience you had with Minister uh, Fard Muhammad?" Oh, so. I was also able to explain that experience with the minister in his living room. He also told me that wasn't a dream. <laughs> so this is what happened. The experience started out like this. I was standing on the sidewalk. It's broad daylight. I'm standing on the sidewalk close to the corner of a street, talking to some black man who's standing in the middle of the street for some reason. I don't know who he is. I don't know what we're talking about. But all of a sudden, the man looks at his right like this and gets afraid. And so I look and see, what is he looking at? He's so afraid. I didn't see anything. So I turned back to look at him to ask him what was he so afraid of. He's not there no more. He just disappears. So I'm looking around like, where is he at? And then I say, OK, let me look to the left and see what, what was he looking at that he was so scared of. I look back to the left, and the Savior comes walking around the corner. The way that he looks in the picture that he gave us, that's exactly how he looks. Now, I know who I'm looking at, so I get scared immediately. I get on my hands and my knees, and I'm like, don't think, don't look at him. I was afraid. I'm just saying, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. I'm on my hands and knees on the sidewalk outside. I'm scared because he's walking towards me. So he walks to me, and he stops like five feet in front of me. He's smiling at me. He never stops smiling. I didn't want to look at him, but somehow he used his thinking to force my head up to look at him. He made me look at him. And he's pointing his hand out like this for me to take his hand, and he's smiling. He never said a word. I was scared. I didn't want to touch his hand. I was scared. So he knew that I was scared. So he started walking away from me, looking back at me, doing this, without talking, and like, come with me, come with me. He wasn't saying that, but he was doing this, smiling. So I'm like, OK, you want me to come with you? So I'm scared still. So I said, OK, well, let me try to walk towards you. I was terrified. I like leaned up off of the ground and took one step towards him. And then I woke up. And mm -hmm. I, explained, I explained that situation to the minister. The minister said, that wasn't a dream. He said, that was huge. He said, Allah was beckoning you to come with him. And I was like, wow, Allah walked by. And <laughs> then that's when the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan told me, uh, he wants me to be the one to see him leave after I told him that. And then he said, whoever's there with you, I want them to be there with you. And then he started telling me how special I am and everything. I'm just thinking about all of us. I don't know why Allah is placing this on me, but I just want to do as I'm told. Because, like, in my eyes, I'm a dirty, filthy rag <laughs> to even be allowed to be present to see something like that but i feel that allah will bless me to be able to do what it is that he want me to do and i just want to be submissive to the process and it's a it's a trying process because a lot of people place me on these high plateaus that i'm not worthy of and i gotta tell people no no no, no. i'm just your brother like <laughs> i'm just your brother that's it you know, I have to remain humble and I do my best not to allow people to throw too much on me that I'm not. I'm not this big person. Allah and his messenger is the big person. I'm just your little baby brother. <laughs> That's it. Praise be to Allah. And I'm going to go to, first of all, the experience. <laughs> I felt like I was there, like being called. That was, nice. you, put, you explained it so beautifully that it allowed us to um 
come to that place with you in our minds. So right. even, even him allowing you, allow, allowing you to remember it as vividly as you did, that's, that's beautiful. That's a blessing to be able to share with everybody. Um, our next question is, and this goes perfectly into um, what you finished off on. Sister Deanna asked, have you found what your purpose is? If so, does your experiences with the plane correlate? Yes. <laughs> So I didn't find it. I was told what my purpose is. <laughs> I mean, um, <clears throat> the minister told me he wants me to be the one to see him leave. And he told me to take pictures. And then he said, whoever that person is to see me leave is going to be a famous person because the whole world is going to have questions to you. So he was telling me, you're going to have to explain to the whole world who the minister is and that we actually had a man of God in our midst and they didn't see it. They thought he was just a good speaker who's the leader of the nation of Islam and that's it. Much more than that, all of us know, but the rest of the planet, they have no clue, most of the people. And everyone who knows it just don't want to accept it, Allah deal with them. But we have to bear witness to the truth that we know of. And the baby planes, they directly correlate with that because they are the ones who took them in the first place to the mother wheel. And they are the ones who are getting ready to take them again. And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said to the minister the first time he allowed him to the will to listen to his voice. He said, when you come back the next time, I would allow you to see me face to face. Now, what physically dead human being going to tell you I allow you to see me face to face? It can't happen. So that means the messenger is still alive. The honorable minister Louis Farrakhan went to the will and came back with a message that he didn't have before he left. And the guidance that he's been guiding us all along because of what he, what, what he was told to do when he was on the wheel, all of that is the reason why we know for sure that it is the fact the most honorable Elijah Muhammad escaped the death plot. It's not, it's not something beyond the Lord of the worlds to trick somebody and make you think you killed them, you know? Say that, brother. <laughs> say that it's not beyond Allah's reach um our next question which goes good with um you telling us about why the minister said that you would be the one to see him depart uh the question is since you will be there when it's time for the minister to go yonder do you believe you will be summoned on his arrival I don't know how it's going to happen. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan told me he don't know where he's going to be when they come to take him. He said he knows it's going to happen, though. So however it's going to happen, the law already has that worked out before I was born. <laughs> it's just, I just have to submit to the process, and that goes for all of us. A law has our whole lives worked out for us if we submit to the process. But one thing I do know, the minister has been bringing me around him personally a lot more and telling me a lot more things a lot of stuff i can't share yet but what i can share i get to do interviews like this and bear witness so that's one thing i can say the honorable minister louis farrakhan he's submitted to the process already <laughs> he's telling me about the process and what to do and the more that i think on it I'm being told what to do and how to do it, you know, if that makes sense. So how is it going to happen? If Allah wants me there, if he's talking through the messenger, the messenger saying he wants me there, then it's going to happen. Wherever it's going to be at, it's going to happen. Oh, yes, great. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Brother Jeremy. Go ahead. Hey, my <laughs> <boy>. <laughs> Um, so we had another um, question in chat from uh, Brother uh, Salim. He says, what colors have you seen the wills display and what do you think they mean? I've seen them display red colors, white colors, and blue colors. I've seen recently green. <laughs> um, I only heard the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan talk about the red color. He talked about how when he was overseas, his baby plane was flashing red away from the hotel in the sky. And he said that that was a message to get him and his family up out of there. And they left. And he said when he left, a few days later, bombs fell on that country that he was in. So he said, so basically red is 
you know, stop a danger. You know, I've seen red a few times. I've seen white a lot. I've seen green. Recently, last week at night, I seen a baby plane come to the farm. It was a spear, a ball of white light. It came from the sky over the minister house, down through the clouds, came right over the minister house. It turned bright and white and big, and then it turned green, and then it took off. And just this past Sunday, the minister called me to his house and asked me, he said, did you see any wheels? I said, yes, sir, brother minister. And I told him exactly what I explained to you all and some more that came. Then he said, boy, you are very special. You are very special. So, I mean, uh, I'm sitting there like me, you. <laughs> I'm special, you're special. And so, you know, it's just, like I said, if Allah is placing things on us, we have to submit to the process and allow Allah to make us more into himself is what he's doing. Yes, sir. Um, a sister put in the chat, and it's perfect because I actually had it written down. So the scissors is in the inner room aligned today. Um, mm -hmm. Mother Time Leva said that we have, and she actually put the exact lecture in here for anybody that would like to go to it. Um, the lecture is called Virtuous Woman, Re The Return of the Virtuous Woman. Um, and she talked about how we have two angels assigned to us. I'm a tag team it with this question. So it's kind of a, a all in all question. Um, we're also taught, I believe that there are angels in every city. Yes. Does this correlate, is there a correlation between, I guess my question is, can you expound on the two angels being assigned to us and then can it be that those angels that are assigned to us are already on this planet since there's angels in every city or are we assured that the angels that are assigned to us are on the wheel and do we share angels like is it like sister Zodi and myself got like the same two assigned angels <laughs> who <laughs> and knows what are those angels assigned for those angels are assigned to guide us the believers they're assigned to guide us and one of those angels we're taught is the recorder of our deeds. And when the matter is decided, they will hand us a book of our deeds. If our book is handed in our right hand, we'll be saved. If our book is handed in our left hand, then that means our bad outweighs our good. So, <laughs> and I mean, I mean, it's this whole thing is real deep, but it's reality. And a lot of things is angels, they're doing things, they're here already in plain sight. And I believe two different times I've ran into two angels because these two different times, once was 18, no, once was in the year 2000, I was in processing class. And this man came into processing class and I never seen him before, never seen him before. He came into processing class. I'm sitting in the back by myself, not around anyone because I wanted to pay attention. But this man I've never seen before, an older man, walks in, he looks at me. Immediately, he walks in and looks at me. I don't, I don't even know who he is. So I'm like, why is he looking at me like that? <laughs> I just pay attention to the speaker that's teaching. He comes to sit right next to me on my right side. And all of these empty seats, I'm like, why did he sit right next to me? I don't even know him. I've never seen him before. So, but his energy was different. It was like a peaceful energy. So I said, okay, whatever, let me pay attention. So processing, processing class is done, right? People start getting up and walking out. I'm still sitting there. Then he sits there and he looks at me. He said, how old are you? I said, 19, I was 19. And he said, what you're doing here is a great thing. He said, whatever you do, don't leave. Stick with this, don't never leave. Whatever you do. He said, if you never see me again, make sure you do that. And he get up and walk out. I'm looking at him like, <laughs> And so I actually followed what he said to do because it felt like an instruction. That's the way he gave it to me. That man never, ever came back around, ever. He came there one time, told me what to do, and he never, ever came back around, ever. And I'm always around the mosque. He never, ever came back around. So I believe he was an angel. And then there was another time many years ago, I was standing at a bus stop on my way to the mosque before I had a car. I'm standing at a bus stop. And this man is walking down the street. Now, this is late at night, past 
this is past 10 o'clock. So it, there wasn't a lot of people out there. It was no one walking around anything at that late at night. So this man comes from around the corner and start walking my way. I'm looking and I'm like, okay, who is this? Like, <laughs> so I'm standing at the bus stop. He stops at the bus stop and faces me. And he said, I was drinking a bottle of water. He sparked the conversation. He said, I see you drinking a bottle of water. You're young. I'm like, okay, yeah. Like, <laughs> and then he starts telling me what to do because I like architecture, but I don't talk about it like that. This man busts out of nowhere. He said, you like architecture, don't you? He said, you should get into architectural engineering because you will be able to do this, 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 this. Make sure you do that. If he did, he said, if you never see me again, make sure you look into that. And he walked off. I never seen him again in my life. This was years ago. So, I mean, those angels are already here. We don't know who they are. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said they hide in plain sight because the enemy is looking for them to kill them. And they hide their identity so they can't be killed. So, I mean, they're already here. And, and if we strive to live the way we're supposed to live, the way we're taught to live, then our good, inshallah, will outweigh our bad. And we'll be giving our book in our right hand, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. Goodness. Um, this question is from myself, Brother Arvins, because uh, all of these things that you're saying right now, for those who can bear witness you know and it's not difficult for them to believe it's it's amazing you know what you're talking to us about but being that you're in this position and um like you said in your interview with closing the gap that the minister even wants you to consider getting into the ministry um with you being in front of people in this capacity with these experiences that you have what would you say to anybody who you know, just feels that you're just making things up or like, why should I listen to him? Um, you know, what, what would you say to that type of energy, I guess? Well, just keep breathing. <laughs> and as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, if you think we're making this up about the wills through what we're taught, through the life-giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, he said, keep breathing. He said, keep living. You're going to see it. Reality is real. So either someone can prove what they're saying or not. There is no in-between. It's right or wrong. It's true or false. There is no in-between. So, I mean, there's a lot of people who's going to disbelieve. It's been happening since 1930. It's been happening before then. Open the Bible, open the Quran. Thousands of years ago, there were disbelievers. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that aspect, a lot deal with it. But you don't let disbelievers discourage you from telling the truth you tell the truth and you put your life on the truth that god brought if he a liar then all of this is false it's impossible for him to lie when you tell a lie you're lying because you're trying to hide the fact of something what does a lie have to hide he is true all truth comes from him all knowledge and wisdom comes from him so anything that we learn that comes from him the honorable mr louis farrakhan said all of you all can be ministers he said, all you have to do is read the books of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. He said, repeat them with conviction and you will have thousands following you. And he said, if you follow the messenger that those that follow you follow the messenger as well. So just, just stand up and speak the truth and let Allah speak through you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, this is a great time to, because we're at the seven, uh, clock and 24 minute mark. Uh, Brother Javon said this would be a great time to announce that there is a book that's going to be coming out soon. I believe the minister discussed it on the Swan Song, Brother Jabril's book called Is It Still Is It Possible That the Let Me Get the Actual Hold On Boom Boom Boom. Here is we go. Is it possible that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is still physically alive? And the book This Is the One. Those both of both of those books are coming out soon. I do believe the first one that I mentioned um, about him physically being alive was on the Final Call store, but it is like sold out right now. <laughs> <laughs> Probably sold out immediately after the Swan Song. Okay. So stay tuned for those. As soon as um, we find out, we will definitely announce it on the Master Call as well that those books are available. So please stay tuned for that. 
And then our next question is, everyone obviously we have so many questions. <laughs> we only have 30 minutes left. <laughs> so that means you gotta come back for a part two. Um, so um, our next question is, I'm gonna come from, I'm gonna come from the list. Okay. Does what you want impact what you, excuse me, does what you want impact when you see the wheels? And then um, I'm gonna do two questions at, what, at once. Does what you eat impact when you see the wheels? Yes. I've noticed that when I fast more, I see them more and it's easier for me to see them. It's easier for me to call them and they show up right away when I fast more. I've done a 30 day fast. And when I tell you I've seen them everywhere, every day and night, everywhere. And it's like, I was on a, such a high spiritual plane mentally and spiritually doing that 30 day fast. I've never felt anything like that. So what you eat, it does affect you because you are what you eat. And if you're eating garbage constantly or unhealthy food constantly, then it's like clogging up the communication line between yourself and the angels on the wheels. You won't be able to get through as clearly as you would if you're eating one meal a day or if you're eating healthier food that helps your mind and helps your body to operate better. And the first question was, what was it? Does what you want impact when you see the wheels? Yes. Um, when I want to see them, it's like I feel them. And when I want to call for them, I call for them and they come. Very rarely would they not show up when I want to call for them on purpose. And sometimes what happens to me, they have taken me to a higher level to the point. Many times I don't have to call for them. I just think on them and they show up. So they are the ones in control of this whole process with you and them. How you see them, when you see them, how you call for them. Because speaking with words is one thing. That's one level. They're on a higher level than that. The Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan said you think to talk to them. They listen to your thinking. So I've gotten to that level as well. I started thinking and then they show up. Like when I call for them now, I don't say it out of my words. I just think. I look up in the sky and I think. And I do like this and I think. And then as you know, a light pops on next to a star. And then it starts moving around. And then another one pops up. And then another one just shoots by like that. And I'd be like, <laughs> you know it, you don't know how they're going to show up or how many you just know that they're going to show up praise be to Allah I hope y'all taking notes on that one because we know if brother Arvins wasn't here today we'd be reading how to eat to live right because that's what we do brother Arvins is how to eat to live Tuesday um quick clear uh, a clarification question for what you just said too um the 30-day fast was that a uh sunset fast or you mean no food no food for 30 days for 30 days straight i only had water coffee and tea that's what i'm talking but about Ooh. i studied every single day i studied the teachings in the quran every single day so the teachings was my food i was only hungry for the first day the rest of the days i was on autopilot and i mean each day became greater and greater and greater i only had water coffee and tea and i was never hungry only for the first day mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> and I, I did that fast not for bragging reasons I felt that I needed a spiritual reset just for myself and I documented my journey because I knew that it inspired other believers so I documented my journey on social media and it helped others people started inboxing me asked me what do you think I should do I want to do it and you know you're able to help other people yes yeah, sir don't look surprised, y'all. We guys now. Come on. Y'all can do that 30 day fast. <laughs> All right. But that was a clarification question. The next question is um, let me see. What is your favorite quote from the minister, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? That's all right. I have a lot. <laughs> I have so many. I put a lot of them in my phone. I have like this long list in my phone of many quotes that he's told me and many others. You know, I can't mention just one. Maybe 
the things that he told me about myself concerning the assignment that he gave me and my relationship with the angels on the wheels, he had to tell me all of this stuff. I don't know. I'm just striving to be a believer and striving to do right, just like the regular believer. You know, he, he has to be the one to tell us this stuff. And once he tells you, I've learned over the years, a suggestion from him should really be taken as an instruction. Because the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he doesn't have the spirit as a dictator. He don't say, do this with it. He can, but he don't even do it like that. He suggests. He gives you ideas. He said, well, maybe you should think about, you know, he has to tell us things like that. Because one thing he doesn't do is beat down on anyone with words or with actions, you know. And he has authority to do it, but he doesn't do it. So an instruction from him will usually come in the form of a suggestion. And when you're listening to him speak, he will give instructions, but he's teaching on a higher level. You have to look deeper into it. Just like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said many, many times how the most honorable Elijah Muhammad told him things that he found out he had to look deeper into it. It's, it's on you, it's on me. If we sit and do nothing, we can't go to the next level. Oh, praise due to a lot, brother. Uh, so another question from the chat, um, Brother Charles. He says, someone mentioned the angels communicating with numbers earlier. Could this have anything to do with the quote-unquote angel numbers? Angel numbers? Yes, sir. So angel numbers are considered like 444 and like 333. Oh, yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, there's no way that they can't communicate. We have to be open enough to look deeper into it and not just see it as a one dimensional thing. So if we go deeper into what they're telling us, go deeper into the teachings, we, we can find unlimited knowledge, unlimited guidance. And we'll be able to, as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, that Master Father Muhammad is using us as the cornerstone to build the next world, to replace Satan in his world. You have to allow him to do that. <laughs> like, if you don't submit to the process, you can't really get the full benefit out of it that you can. Brother Arvin, you got me lit up. I'm Crazy trying to be calm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be calm, but my inside is like, talk beer. <laughs> I want to say another bear with this so bad because you teach it. And I don't even know if you know that you teach it, but you're, you're bear witnessing to the teachings. Like you were saying before, the minister said, as long as you repeating and right. it's in your heart, just repeat it, you're going right. to be good and beloved. You're bear witnessing to the teachings. It almost reminds me of Brother Abdul Kiyam. Mm. Y'all have the same type of um, beautiful energy that is like, you could tell these brothers love this for real, for real. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I really, really appreciate you. Um, so we're going to go into the next question. Um, I would like you to take us to the moment where the minister told you your assignment, your purpose for being here of um, seeing him depart, taking us to that moment. And how did you actually feel about that? Like, give us the whole vibe if you are able to. Yeah, so it happened in a few different stages. The whole thing didn't happen at once. So the first time the minister came outside, and he said, did you see any wheels last night? He always asked me because he knows he's getting a message from them. However, they're giving it to him through me when I see them. And I know the only thing I know, I have to tell the minister that they came, what they did, colors. I just tell them everything. I don't leave. I strive not to leave no details out. So this particular day, the first time he came outside, it was, it was in the summertime, beautiful day outside. He's just walking around and he stopped. He's talking to other people and he stopped. He turned to look at me and said, all right, Vince, did you see any wheels last night? Out of nowhere, 
And so I light up because I know I did at this time. And I just start explaining everything and then the velocity, the colors, they was over there, they did this. And then all of a sudden, I'm looking up in the sky. When I look back at the minister, the minister's like in my face like this. And his eyes are lit up like this because he knows that I'm telling the truth. And so he said, those of you that surround me, you have to bear witness when I'm gone so people don't think I'm dead or something happened to me. Then he looked at me, he said, when I leave, take pictures. And I was like, yes, sir. And it, it didn't even dawn on me at first what he was telling me until he went in the house. I said, wait a minute, he told me to take pictures. I was like, what? I just like, it was blowing my mind and I had to think on that for many days. Like, he told me to take pictures. And I'm like, wait, am I gonna be there? And look, it's like the whole, <laughs> the whole surprise was like, it was overbearing for me at first. And then a few other times the minister sitting outside in the summertime, he calls me over, he gives me the greetings, I return it. I always bow in his presence, always. And so he starts telling me how much he appreciate me. And then he starts telling me the angels on the wheels love me. They follow me wherever I go. And then he starts telling me they like you. Then he said, they go to you first when they want to talk to me. And I'm just like, huh? And so I'm standing there just listening to this. But like I mentioned earlier, if you don't submit to the process, then you will just like fall out. You know, you'll, you'll fall out of the process. And we see that in the ranks now. Some people are in the nation, they fall out of the process and then they're out of the nation. You have to do your due diligence and stay consistent. It's not going to always be easy. You're going to deal with people who's going to say you're crazy or you just think you saw something. I've dealt with all of that, but I have in my mind, I don't care what you say. You can't make the Lord of the world as a liar. So until you then, you know, <laughs> say, say what you want. I know this is real. I know it's true. And I'm learning what my assignment is because the Honorable Ms. Louis Farrakhan is telling me I have to do what I'm supposed to do. I have to. Man, um, our sister Rachel, and uh, you know, you don't get if you don't ask. Our sister Rachel asked, can you share with us an experience that you have not shared before? Oh, and I have a few of them. <laughs> um, what comes to mind first? So many years ago, the Vanguard had a retreat. And the last part of that weekend, the Vanguard were at the farm. So the minister speaking to the vanguard, we're not allowed, of course, this is this vanguard class, the minister speaking to them at the farm outside underneath this big tent. So when all of the sisters leave, it gets dark. Myself and other people are at the farm, we cleaning up, putting things up and everything, breaking down the equipment. All of a sudden, I feel something. Some tells me, look to the left in the sky. I look to the left in the sky and these two red balls of light coming up over the trees like this. And they just sit there. And I said, well, are those the baby planes? Then some more came up. One, two, three, four, five. Then I said, Allah, I walk by them the baby planes. Look. Then they was like, they just start coming up like fireworks. And I was like, oh, Allah, I got to tell the minister. I called the minister house. I said, tell the minister, come outside. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. The baby planes said, hurry up, hurry up. It's like they started coming up like fireworks all over the sky from behind the trees across the street from the farm. So. The minister and Mother Khadijah come outside on a golf cart. They go to the side of the fence that I'm standing at, and the minister's granddaughters, everybody is outside, right? We outside, a long walk by, a long walk by. The baby planes shooting up from behind the tree line, red balls of light. They stop in the sky. I'm going to draw out the formation that they made, pardon me, because I can't describe it. I have to show you all. So they stopped in the sky and made this big formation in the sky and everyone got quiet and when everyone got quiet we were looking at one another like what are they doing what are they trying to say something told me to look at the minister's face and the minister looked at them with a serious face and nodded at them and then they broke up and started moving again and so i said oh they talking to each other they were talking to each other whatever they told him the minister understood and he nodded whatever they said to him but this is the formation that they made, if you all can see. This is the tree line down here across the street from the farm. They all made red circles in the sky and they made this big circle in the middle with one on each side and that top. A big 
Now, we're not the only ones to see this. The Caucasian neighbors across the street came out because we was making so much noise talking about Allahu Akbar. They came out of their house. And I heard the Caucasian mom say, what are those red lights in the sky? What are those red lights? So they saw them as well. So this is the formation that they made. I never really talk about this too much, but I asked the imam, what did this mean? And uh, he said, it looks like one of the Arabic letters or something, but he was trying to figure it out. But I don't know what this symbol mean. I looked online and I couldn't really, I seen a couple of crop circles that look similar, but this is different. And when I tell you it lit up the whole sky, this thing was not a small formation. It was huge. You couldn't miss it. You couldn't miss it. And I mean, I mean, they made that formation, then they broke around and left and they were gone, right? So we were standing there outside waiting for them to come back. They never came back. So we think, okay, they're gone for good for tonight. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he was talking to his family members in the house about the wheels. And then they showed up. And a lot of his granddaughters, they broke down outside crying on their hands and knees saying, we believe, we believe, we believe. It's like, whatever they were showing everyone, like we are real. And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is still physically alive. Like all of that, your faith was being upgraded at that moment. And so 15 minutes later, the same wheels that left, they came back. <laughs> So I'm looking outside at the tree line. They coming up from behind this one tree line across the street from the farm. So I called the minister again. I said, they're outside again. The minister and Mother Khadiz and everybody came outside. They didn't make that formation again, but what they did, the minister told us to be quiet. He said, think and ask them what it is that you want. And I just started praying for all of the believers, the families of the believers, everything like that. That's all I wanted is, you know, for all of us and everyone to be taken care of by Allah. And then the minister said, ask them to come closer. And we start saying, please come closer. Please come closer. Two red baby playing lights came up over the trees and stopped. And they actually came closer. They got bigger and came a little closer. And then they just disappeared. And then that was the end of that experience. And then I had another experience where... That, that was the Vanguard retreat, but I had another experience. Oh, this was years ago. I never spoke about this. It's so many, but I was outside at the farm at night one night and it was a clear night, summer night, stars out everywhere because it's dark, right? So I'm walking around and all of a sudden this beam of light comes down from out of the sky across the street from the farm into the woods behind a cornfield. Now I'm looking like, I'm thinking, okay, is that something else or was that an actual beam of light coming from the sky? But it was from the sky. I couldn't see where it was coming from in the sky, but it was a beam of light, like an actual beam. It was a sharp beam of light. And I'm looking like, I've never seen that before ever. So I'm staring at the light and then a white ball of light comes up from behind the trees from the ground and start moving back and forth in front of this white beam of light. And I said, oh, a lot. That's the baby planes. And I said, maybe they're the other ones making the beam of light somehow also. And the baby planes started moving around. It went back down behind the trees. Then it came up and moved to the right. It turned big and it just shot off. And then the light, the beam of light that was sitting there, it went out. And I was just like, the only thing I could think is just to document what I've seen. I wrote it down. I was just documenting it and told the minister. Sometimes the minister gives me a response. Most of the times he does. He just look at me with a serious face and then he nod his head. And whatever message he's getting, he gets it. And I've seen him get messages from Allah and angels on the wheel. And then he comes to the mosque and teach at a believers meeting about some stuff. Like I've seen, I've seen a lot of his lectures, a lot of his speeches come from those angels on the wheels after he's seen them. Oh, praise due to Allah, brother. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, we have a question in the chat from Brother um, Darren. He says, how important is it to discuss and share our quote-unquote paranormal and quote-unquote supernatural experiences with one another and the broader community as it relates to the minister, the Christ, the minister, and the angels? It's very important because you don't know how many people are having these experiences. And if you share yours, you will actually encourage others to share theirs. 
Many people inbox me on Facebook and on Instagram telling me, thank you for sharing. You helped me to share what I've experienced. I don't know who's experiencing these things as well. I just know what I experienced, but I know I can't be quiet about it. You will help others to build the will and the strength to talk about what they've experienced because all of our experiences are gonna help people. It's definitely gonna help other believers around the world. And all of our experiences are uh, moments of teaching for people who don't know what's going on and even for people who disbelieve. Like there was, a, there was a man who didn't believe in the baby claims, but they showed up in his neighborhood while him and his friend was walking down the street. And he said, oh my God, they real, they real. Like, I mean, you have to share your experience. Uh, if you don't have the strength to yet, pray to Allah for strength. He'll give it to you. Yes, sir. I'm glad you asked that question, Brother uh, Jeremy, because that was actually going to, it's kind of like the next question that I'm about to ask. Um, what is the significance of the experiences and us having this conversation openly and the, and the minister's departure? I believe it goes hand in hand because the minister hasn't departed yet. He's been giving me many instructions on what to do before he departed and instructions on what to do as he's departing. So it's like all of us are bears of witness of him. How many years have we been listening to him talk to us and Allah speaks through the messenger? The messenger does not speak idle words. So listen, we looking at the minister, listening to the minister's voice, but we have to keep in mind who's speaking. It's not the minister. It's not him at all. It's somebody else. So how many years, have we been, however long we've been studying these teachings, however long we've been listening to the minister, how many years have we been studying this? It's in you. It's got to come out at some point. Like how long can you pour water in a glass and the glass get full and not run over? <laughs> You have to let your light shine. Just let your cup run over. Talk. The, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, get, you don't have to do much. He said, just get a few scripture and stand up and let Allah talk through you. Just stand up. Allah is going to talk through you. If he's in you, he's going to come out. Like, I never know what I'm going to say before I do any interview. I never know what I'm going to say. Stuff just come out. It's in all of us. But you have to say it. Don't be afraid to say it. Sir, speak your truth, family. Um, Brother Javon asked, have you talked to the minister since the swan song? If so, what has he said to you that you can share with us? Yes, this past Sunday, I talked to the minister and he asked me, did I see any wills? And I told him about the most recent uh, baby planes that came to his home at night when he was asleep. And um, he told me that I was very special, very special. He said, you're a really good person. He said, I have some really good people around me. And then he said, I also have some bad people around me too. And then I'm sitting across from him. When he said, I also have some bad people, I did like this. I want to ask him, tell me who they are. Because, <laughs> but then he said, he must have read my thinking because that's another thing the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan talked about before how the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad was listening to him think. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has that ability as well. He can listen to you think. I was about to ask the minister, who are they? But then he said, I don't know who they are. I don't know who they are. Now I just left it alone. I'm not going to even ask him. <laughs> he, you know, so uh, it's a blessing, man. I mean, it's a heavy responsibility. I'm not even worthy to be around him. I'm not even worthy to be in his same presence. I'm not worthy to even look at him, you know, and him telling me, how much of a good person I am. If he's telling you that, then you are. All of us are. How many people on the planet are believers like us? Most people believe in the spook God. Even other Muslims on the planet, they don't believe in Master Father Muhammad to whom I praise to do forever. They don't. They just believe in Prophet Muhammad and that's it. Like Allah has really done something with us and taken us so much further than the whole planet. And if we don't bear witness to it and stay in the process and stay in the school of learning, then we would do a more disservice to ourselves. So it, it, would, it wouldn't be a good idea to do a disservice to yourself when Allah came in person and suffered what he didn't have to suffer when he allowed the enemy to throw him in jail in Chicago. 
He don't have to allow that, but he allowed it. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that the Savior was teaching the most honorable Elijah Muhammad the things that he's going to have to deal with by trying to raise us. The enemy don't want us to be raised. The ultimate aim of this world is to kill the messenger of God and his followers. Are you one of his followers? Let Allah save you. Yes, sir. All praise is due to Allah, brother. This is getting so interesting. And I know we definitely got to bring back for part two because I got so many questions over here that I know everybody wants to get some answers to. Um, but I have a, a question right here um, that I believe is very interesting. Um, man, not good sister's name, but it's um, Shakara. I think it is. Sh I think it is, right? Shakara? Yes. So she says, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan named my son in my dream. My son came two days later, two weeks early. That experience stays dear to my heart, but I'm always looking for more insight into it. Do you know if something like that could just be a dream or a coincidence? There are no coincidences. Well, a lot of concern in his messenger, there's no such thing as a coincidence. Everything is true. And if it doesn't come from a lot in his messenger, you know, it could be false, but what you've experienced is real, it's true. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan told us once, he said, sometimes he thinks and looks into the lives of the believers and actually see what they're doing. And he said, Allah allows him to see believers what they're doing wherever they are. Like he said, their faces come up in his mind and he see their face and see their life and see what they're doing. He said, then Allah gives him a message to go and speak to the believers to guide us out of what it is that some of us are doing that may not be too good. So if he can do that, he can definitely send you your child's name in, in what you think is a dream. That's easy for him. I've seen him name children and name other individuals right in front of my face. I seen him, a guest came to the farm and the minister and his guest is talking and the minister told this man, he's going to be all right during the destruction. He's going to make it to the other side. I've actually seen the minister tell somebody they're going to make it. Like, that blew me away. I was like, wow. So, I mean, that's, that's real. There are no such thing as coincidences. Praise be to a lot. You actually just... Remember when I asked the question and I asked the clarifying question, you clarified the question even more. <laughs> that is so cancer, so all praises and so along. Um, and then this is going to be here, it's here. It's gonna be our last question for the night, but inshallah, we can have our brother on again. Um, Cause brother Jeremy literally just asked me, he said, can I ask a few more questions? He said, we literally have nine in a row. I'm like, <laughs> we still ain't finished the questions from, um, that we already had uh, prior to us starting. If we didn't finish the questions that I'm pretty sure I have separate questions in my notes and I know everybody else got questions in their notes, but this conversation is like, I want you to know brother Arvins how much needed this conversation is. You freed so many believers on this call today because when it comes to the wheels when it comes to the mother plane when it comes to having these experiences and i'm pretty sure a lot of people on here have had outer body experiences when it comes to these things we can allow walk by bear witness all day but the second it comes to this it's like mm, don't say nothing because we have a fear of people seeing the spooky but like you said listen we follow, not be smacking. We follow a man. <laughs> we follow a man that when against all odds said the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is physically alive. Yes, and right. he has held on to that and he has rebuilt an entire nation off of that belief. Right. So if he could do that in his 40s with nine children. Right. and a wife <laughs> like, and literally right. start his life all over we can bear witness every now and again and we can say it without yes. having any fear because we have the man in front of us who is the criterion of what having no fear looks like uh because time exactly. is going to tell anything if time is going to tell everything at the end of the day so we may look crazy now but we won't look crazy in about three more years <laughs> so, <laughs> right. so i'm gonna ask this last question um sister jadea asked a beautiful question i think it's a great question to close out on 
She says, question, can we talk about nurturing faith and purifying one's thoughts, considering he spends a lot of time around the minister and the minister is sensitive to thought? Yes, that's a beautiful question. Nobody never asked me was it like that. So, so many years, I've been around a minister now for 18 years and studying the life giving teachings of the most honorable lives Muhammad constantly is the first stage of preparing your mind to even deal with the messenger. Like if you're thinking and, and if your uh, intentions aren't right, the, the atmosphere around the minister will burn you up. You can't, you can't stay there. Like somehow, some way you will be removed. I've seen it happen to plenty of people. I've seen it. People think they want to be around a minister. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan will constantly challenge you to uplift your mind, your spirit, and your belief. He'll show you things. I mean, the minister showed me some baby planes. He said, you see that light right there? That's one of the wheels. I thought it was a star. It was just sitting there doing this. But it was sitting there doing this with the other stars outside. I'm used to seeing the baby planes move. He comes out on the porch. He said, you see that light right there? He pointed to this particular light. <laughs> you see they like it right there he said that's one of the wheels so I'm looking like wow I mean the minister he's on such a high spiritual level and when you think about his true identity we've never been around a person like this before in our life we never seen a person like this before in our life so there's a certain attitude and spirit you have to have that you're blessed by Allah to even be in that position and for me personally I always stay humble. I always do my best to bow in his presence. When he called me over, I never just stand up over him. If he's sitting down, I make sure that my eyesight is below his. I get on my knees and I make sure that my eyesight is below his eyesight because it's a level of respect in your mind that you have to pay to the Lord of the world for a man like this. He's not a regular human being. There's no regular human being that can survive the death threats that he survived. Who is he and who's saving him? And who is it that's speaking through him? You have to look at these things. Why is he in the scripture? If he's a regular human being, regular people can't just all of a sudden be able to do the things like that, that the scripture talks about what a man will come that would be able to do things like this. Before he was born, he was talked about. In scripture, he's real. Like we have to open our mind and bear witness to that. And Allah will help us to bear witness to the truth that comes from Allah to anyone who disbelieves. Oh, praise is due praise to a lot. Thank you so, so oh, much, God. Brother Arvin. Don't nobody Thank leave you. yet because we are going to close out the way we always close out on the master call with a new word. We're going to see one book, like Brother uh, Arvin said, when the minister gives us a suggestion, because he suggested that we, give this, that we get this book, but we got to take it as an order. So immediately after me, my mom was on it, Amazon looking up the book. So if you don't have this C1, C1 advanced um, vocabulary book, if you want to take a screenshot of that real quick, you go ahead, you can find it on Amazon, I believe. Boom. Um, we're going to do a word from here. We're going to take a um, question from the Teachings 2.0 compiled by our beautiful brother, Abdul Qiyam, and from Value 1 and Value 2. And of course, we're going to close out with the word and then prayer. Uh, before we go into this, is there anything that you would like to say, Brother Arvins, before we go ahead and start closing down? Um, everything that you heard from myself did not come from myself. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to say. I prayed a couple of times before this interview started. I always asked Allah, speak through me, use my spirit, use my mind, take total control. And like you said, I don't know how it's affecting people. I just speak what he gives to me in my mind. And I just know that I have to do it. So all of us have that same ability. Submit to the process. Stay in prayer. Stay in study of the life giving teachers of the most honorable lives of Muhammad. And you can be better tomorrow than you are today. And just keep going and keep going. But just stay in that process. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Praise be to Allah. And for those that saw on the flyer that we have finally have a PayPal for the um, for you to be able to support the master call. Unfortunately, the PayPal right now is having some trouble. So if you sent something in, it got canceled again. It went straight back to you or it never came out at all anyway. 
Um, but what you can do while we get that under control with PayPal is, um, and this is allowing us, I know Brother Arvids is going to be like, hey, don't do this is going to allow us to be able to send Brother Arvids a love offering, okay? Oh. <laughs> so you can please um, send to PayPal. I'm going to put it in the chat right now. Uh, you can send to PayPal, Anissa, and this is my PayPal. But don't worry for the staff. All of this money is going to go straight into the basketball PayPal. So you can send it to PayPal, Anissa, 9395 at gmail.com or you can send to cash app uh, dollar sign ace prodigious I think I spelled that correctly boom I think you said that day y'all be on time child um you can send to those and this will allow us to send brother Arvin a beautiful love offering and yes because we appreciate you and we understand that you gave your you gave your heart today you gave your heart today and there's really no amount of money that you can give to somebody for sharing your heart sharing your wisdom and sharing the teachings but we would love to give you something great. Mm -hmm. so please please if you enjoyed and i know you did enjoy uh what brother arvin's had to say today please make sure you go and donate to the master call so that we can bless him. um so we're going to go straight into our c1 advanced book Sister Anissa. Beloved. Two things, uh, real yes. quick. They also put Brother Arvin's is a cash app in there in the chat. Ooh. Is yeah, so Brother Arvin's cash app is also in there, which Sister Jadea and Brother Javon just dropped again. Um, and also Sister Jadea, um, just for us to plug this book in before we get into the word of God and God's men. Um, this is can't see it right now, unfortunately. It's a book from our brother Ilya Rashad on the UFOs um, or the wheels, I should say, UFOs and the Nation of Islam. Um, Sister Jadea just dropped a link for this book in the chat as well. So this is also from one of our knowledgeably studied brothers on this particular subject. If you have any other questions that we couldn't get to you from our brother, Ar Arvents. Uh, so that's in the chat as well. Uh, you can go ahead, Sister Anissa. Yes, sir. Um, please make sure you follow the master call on Instagram to stay updated with all the interviews and classes that we have. We have a class every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Um, and all the questions that we could not get to all the questions, please send your questions to, um, the master call. Do we want to send it to the DM or the email? Um, the DM. The DM. Yeah. Okay. Please send your questions to the master call on Instagram, our direct message. And inshallah, when we have a part two, we can come back with that. Uh, Brother Javon? Yes. Asalaamu Alaikum, family. I just want to let y'all know that this isn't a one time thing. If you're not familiar with the master call, we did have an entire anniversary last year. We had student minister Dr. Wesley, we had student minister Brother Nuri, we had Brother Dimitri, Brother Ilya Rashad, and Brother Ishmael, and the anniversary is coming up. So we advise y'all to continue to come and participate in the master call. We do this call three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. This Thursday, we will be in the restrictive law book, and we want to see all of you back again. So I just wanted to say that so y'all can continue to come and stay updated. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. So we're going to go straight into our C1 book. Um, our word for the day is count countenance. Not me trying to not be able to read. It's countenance. Um, C-O-N, right there. C-O-U-N-T-E-N-A-N-C-E, -E, which means Give sanction or support to, tolerate or approve. For example, if someone will not countenance something, they do not agree with it and will not allow it to happen. Mm. If somebody could use that in a sentence, I feel like it's going to work real good with these, uh, with the baby planes and the angels and how Honor, they help, help me. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan does not countenance incompetence and lies in his presence. Come on. Hey, Come on now. Come on now. So we're gonna go to our uh come on, Sister John Day with the vocabulary. We're gonna go to our teachers 2.0, volume one. 
All right. Oh, this is so perfect. Okay. The minister was asked, this is page 149. The minister was asked, how did you conquer vanity within yourself to become humble? That mm. if, that's if you were vain at all. The minister said, I was vain, but I didn't recognize my vanity. I had to come to the realization that while I was preaching for the good of others, I also wanted a little praise for myself. And when I discovered my vanity, a lot God helped me to see the nothing with the nothingness of myself and the greatness of him and the greatness of the people that we are to serve and to save. No man coming to God except as an honored servant. Lastly, my teacher, Elijah Muhammad, said to me one day, you don't weigh enough to step through the earth. Neither are you tall enough to equal yourself to the mountains. So take your place among the creatures of God. He also said, and the scriptures bear witness, he who seeks to exalt himself, God will abase or humble. And he who humbles himself, God will exalt. Seek exaltation from God by humbling yourself to him to do his will. Come on, perfect. Like, um, listen. And I'm gonna take one from value two. Mm -mm. Oh, I like this. So this is on page 198 of volume two, the minister was asked, what does Muhammad X or Farrakhan mean? The minister answered, the name Muhammad means one worthy of praise or praise much. X in mathematics stands for the unknown. My teacher, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad never taught me the meaning of my name. He said he would tell me its meaning at the proper time, but the name Farrakhan is one of the modern names of God. And if you study the minister and work, and if you study the minister and my work and what it produces, you might be able to discern the meaning of my name. Mm. Hmm. Oh, praise you. Come on now. Come on. I mean, a lot of you on time with these. Uh, every time we open it up, it's right on point with what we'd be talking about. There is no coincidence, like Brother Arvin said. Right. So Brother Javon will go ahead and close out with our um, Holy Quran reading. And Brother Demetrius will close out in prayer. And again, thank you all so, so much for joining. This has been a pleasure. We had a blast. And I leave you as I came before in the greeting words of peace and paradise. of Assalamu alaikum. Brother Javon. Wa alaikum salam. All right, I open to Surah 28, the narrative, section seven, opponents shall be brought low, page 778. I got your brother, go ahead. Goodness. Right. <laughs> In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, is he to whom we have promised a goodly promise, which he will meet with, like him whom we have provided with the provisions of this world's life, then on the day of resurrection, he will be of those brought up for punishment and the day when he will call them and say, where are those whom you deemed to be my associates? Those against whom the word has proved true will say, our Lord, these are they whom we caused to deviate. We caused them to deviate as we ourselves deviated. We declare our innocence before thee. Us, they never worship. And it will be said, call your associate gods. So they will call upon them, but they will not answer them, answer them, and they will see the chastisement with that they have had followed the right way. And the day when and the day he will call them, then say, what was the answer you gave to the messengers on that day? Excuses will become obscure to them, so they will not ask each other. But as to him who repents and believes and does good, maybe he will be among the successful. And thy Lord creates and chooses whom he pleases. To choose is not theirs. Glory be to Allah and exalted be he above what they associate with him. And thy Lord knows what their breasts conceal and what they pro proclaim. And he is Allah. There is no God but he. His is the praise in this life and the hereafter, and his is the judgment, and to him you will be brought back. Say, do you see if Allah were to make the night con to continue incessantly 
on you to the day of resurrection? Who is the God besides Allah who could bring you light? Will you not then hear? Say, do you see if Allah were to make the day to continue incessantly on you to the day of resurrection? Who is the God besides Allah that could bring you the night in which you take rest? Do you not then see? And out of his mercy, he has made for you the night and the day that you may rest therein and that you may seek of his grace and that you may give thanks. And the day when he will call them and say, where are my associates whom you pretended? And we shall draw and we shall draw forth from among every nation a witness and say, bring your proof. Then shall they know that the truth is a lie and that which they forged will fail them. Oh, mm. praise be to Allah. Oh, and that was Surah 28, the narrative, section 7, opponents shall be brought low. Yes, sir. Sister Jade asked about the YouTube so this recording can be shown. Um, we are going to make a master call um, YouTube, so please, this is why we need you to make sure you go follow the master call on Instagram so when that is uploaded and everything, we, we can let you know and um, be abreast of that. And we will immediately go into prayer. And uh, also, if you don't have an Instagram and you just hate Instagram, then just keep coming to the calls and you'll hear you'll hear the good news. Just keep coming to class. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Attention prayer. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, Master of the Day of Requital in which we now live. Thee alone do we serve, and thine aid do we seek. O Allah, guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors, not the path of those whom thy wrath is brought down, nor of those who go astray after hearing thy teachings. We thank you for this beautiful dialogue around what you have revealed to Brother Arvents, and we pray, Allah, that you continue to keep our eyes and our ears open and receiving to your light and dark to the falsehood of this world. Thank you, Allah. In your holy and righteous name, we pray. Amin. Amin. Takdir. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Praise be to Allah. I love you all. There's nothing you can do about that. May Allah bless your night. Have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your night. And go outside and call on some praise. <laughs> we, we got the spirit, so let's put it to the test. Let's put it to the test. That's when right. It's dark outside. Let us go outside and just see. Just call on them. Do like Brother Arvin said. I'd like to bless you all. I'll follow you. Love you In too. Um, Thank you, Brother Arvin. Thank you, Brother Arvin. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Oh, my mom's really sick.